The Vostok Amphibia is a legendary Soviet-era dive watch. It has become a cult classic in the Western world as a cheap and robust diver. The trouble is, it's no longer as cheap as it once was. The terrible war in Ukraine and subsequent sanctions on Russia have made it a lot harder to find. I had been watching eBay like a hawk for months trying to track one of these down for a good price. And after a couple of near misses, I'm ashamed to say I got restless and overpaid. I paid nearly £90 for this watch, but it's such an icon, I couldn't say no. There were loads of different dial, bezel and strap combinations, but I went for the classic Scuba Dude variant on the bracelet. Okay, let's take a closer look. The case measures 39mm in diameter, with a chunky thickness of 15mm and a lug width of 18mm. The lug to lug measurement is quite short at 46mm, a great set of dimensions. It is made of stainless steel with a completely polished finish. It has a large unsigned screw down crown, which is infamously wobbly. This is to protect the crown due to the absence of crown guards. There is a screw down case back engraved with the Amphibia branding and some Russian text I can't read. Water resistance is 200 meters, which is fantastic. It has a bi-directional diver's bezel with red and black markers. And there's a domed acrylic crystal, which is in keeping with its mid 20th century origins. The dial is the classic light blue with the scuba dude emblem with baton hour markers and loomed pips. The minute and hour hands are a high polished silver too with loom and the seconds hand is red with a loomed pip. There's a framed date window at the three o'clock position. The proportions of the dial are really excellent. It looks fantastic. The movement is the Vostok 2416 automatic movement and it isn't the most accurate movement with a rating of minus 20 to plus 60 seconds a day. The power reserve is 31 hours. If I wanted accuracy, surely I would just go for quartz. There is no quick set date feature, so you have to turn the hands past midnight to change the date one day at a time. You can shortcut this by turning the watch back to around 9 p.m. and past midnight to cycle the date, but it's still a bit of a pain in the arse. The bracelet is also high polished stainless steel and yes it's quite poor, it's very rattly and flimsy but I specifically went for this one because it pairs really well with the dial and the case and it can always be changed if need be. It uses push pins and it's easy enough to adjust with some micro adjustment. The clasp is low quality but it works. So what's the verdict? Well the design is iconic, the dimensions are perfect the quality is not amazing, but that's part of its rustic appeal. It's not pretentious or pretending to be something it isn't. It's functional, it does the job. What you see is what you get. I may sound crazy, but I think this watch is up there with the Rolex Submariner and the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms in the iconic dive watch standings. Sure, the quality isn't comparable. But the dial and case and bracelet come together to form a one-of-a-kind dive watch. It's hard to find truly unique watches these days. Everything looks so similar and uninspired that if you took the brand name off the dial, you would struggle to tell them apart. This is a relic of a bygone era and I love it. I didn't have a proper dive watch in my collection and this fills the gap nicely. It reminds me of the Seagull 1963, which is another watch that seems to be stuck in a time warp. I love history and these watches are a window into the past. China and Russia have often been maligned by the Western world, but every culture has something to offer and I for one am happy to be the owner of these two classic watches. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, please consider liking and subscribing, it does help. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, you can do so at the underscore hole cut. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again very soon.